hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed Anna's presentation on Rudyard Kipling. Uh, I will be talking a little bit about the next laureate of Nobel Prize in Literature, Rudolf Christoph Eucken. Uh, his last name is called Eucken, not Eucken, uh, because he's German. I'm J Jerry. I'm also a student at OSHA, a, a high school in California. And Rudolf Christoph Eucken was the laureate of a Nobel Prize in Literature in 1908. Uh, here's a portrait of him with his big uh, white beard. Pretty, uh, pretty um, outstanding personal characteristic. That I'm pretty sure you'll, you'll uh, remember his face. He look he. He looks like he looks like Ernest Hemingway in a sense. Um, hopefully, you'll get the joke. <laughs> uh, so that's because who was Oiken? He was born in 1846 and died in 1926, uh, about 18 years after winning his prize. Still, uh, compared to other winners, he died pretty late after winning his prize, uh, but still earlier than Rudyard Kipling. Uh, Oiken was. Uh, was a German philosopher and professor. He received a PhD in classical philosophy and history in 1866. Now this is pretty outstanding because uh, he received his PhD when he was only 20, 20 years old. Uh, I mean, compared to modern day people, uh, did they receive their PhDs when they were 25, even more, uh, around 30 for some people even later than that, considering you, you go to college in a when, when you are 18 and you have four years of undergrad, about two years of um, graduate school, and about five, four to six years of doctorate studies, you will turn about 30 when you receive a PhD, but or you can got his when he was only 20, and that's pretty outstanding. Um, so as a philosopher and a professor, he uh, supported the idea of philosophy of life, which he, um, also created a term of ethical activism. We'll talk about this, we'll talk about both of these terms later on. Um, but there's one thing to point out that or you can compare to other uh, Nobel Prize and literature laureates like Rudyard Kipling or Sully Prudhomme as we have previously uh, talked about or some more famous ones that like Hemingway, Jose Saramago or, or uh, other famous fiction writers. Or you can is comparatively less famous well, one reason is that he's a, he, he doesn't write fiction, he's a philosopher and professor, he writes uh, comparatively boring scholarly works, uh, and if, if you come go on his Wikipedia page, uh, his page is fairly short, and compared to Rudyard Kipling's, uh, uh, Oiken's Wikipedia page is like two paragraphs, and that's it. Um, although although uh, scholars have received no press in literature before, it's like uh, Theodore Momsen, uh, we have talked, I'm pretty sure Lacole has talked about it in a previous, uh, in, in a previous video. But, but what difference, uh, uh, but why Momsen received a bit more fame than Oiken is that uh, Momsen made his writing more uh, engaging to the general audience, but uh, Oiken didn't do that. He, he went, his writing was uh, straight uh, scholarly with, with no consideration for enjoyment. So his audience was most other scholars, other, other philosophers, other professors, or sometimes his students, but rarely the general, uh, the general public. So Oiken was born in Orich, a, a city in the state of Lower Saxony in Germany. He grew up with his, with his mother because his father died when he was a child. Um, he, he studied at University of Göttingen, which is uh, at the location of the green dot on the map of Germany. Orich is at the red dot, so near the coastline. Uh, so at in university, or you can study philosophy of theology. Well, actually he studied, he focused on theology. Um, but he was much more interested in the philosophy of theology uh, rather than the religious part of theology, uh, which we'll also see uh, when we look at when we uh, when we look at his work uh, shortly. So, as a professor, he has a he had a pretty um, outstanding teaching career. After graduating 
uh, after graduating from college, he was a school teacher at multiple different cities like Hassam, Berlin, Frankfurt. Um, uh, as a school teacher, he never left Germany uh, or he never taught outside of Germany, but, be, uh, but when he became a college professor, he taught at, at many, many uh, different universities. He taught at University of Basel, that, that's in Switzerland. Uh, he, back, he came back and taught at University of Jena, in, uh, that's in Germany. He also went to the United States. He gave lectures at Harvard University and New York University. So, uh, he went to Harvard, but he didn't make sure that, well, when I, when I said he went to Harvard, he didn't go to Harvard to study, he went to Harvard to teach. He went, uh, he went there in around 1912, uh, at, at the same, uh, in the same stay, he went to New York and gave a, gave a few lectures over there too. Uh, the prize motivation that the Swedish Academy gave to Oiken for his Nobel Prize in Literature was that in recognition of his earnest search for truth, his penetrating power of thought, his wide range of vision, and the warmth and strength in, present, uh, in presentation with which in his numerous works he has vindicated and developed an idealistic philosophy of life. Uh, this might be a lot to take in. Uh, a summary, the Swedish Academy believed that Oiken's work has a lot to like. So we can keep, uh, see from here. Uh, first, they liked, the Swedish Academy liked his earnest search for truth uh, because, because Oiken is a philosopher, so uh, and he focuses on philosophy of life as, uh, as the Swedish Academy mentioned here. Uh, the second, the, uh, Oiken's second outstanding characteristic is his penetrating power of thought. This basically means that his, his ideas, the theories or images that he presented are very uh, clear, concise, and useful. Uh, uh, normal people can apply those things. Uh, of course, if, uh, if they can understand or you can already schol uh, scholarly writing. But if a person can understand his writing, um, they can more than likely apply it to their own eyes. Um, the third part, uh, or Oiken's third shining point is his wide range of vision. This means that Oiken pulls information from a lot of different subjects, not just philosophy, but also religion or theology, and history, politics, sociology, which we'll all see in his uh, work. Um, the next one is the warmth and strength in, in presentation in which his, in his numerous works he has vindicated and developed an idealistic philosophy of life. Philosophy of life is a, we can call it a branch of philosophy, um, but unlike those abstract or, or uh, unlike those abstract uh, philosoph philosoph philosophical ideas, philosophy of life focuses on how to incorporate or use those abstract philosophical ideas in in uh, daily life, so it's it's more realistic. Al although the Swedish Academy said it's idealistic, but um, it is. Uh, but Oiken tried to make his ideas useful to the to, to the general public, which in a sense, in a way, he succeeded in doing so. Uh, which I believe could might be a, a reason uh, why he received his Nobel Prize. Uh, his most famous work might be his book, The Problem of Human Life as, a vi as Viewed by the Great Thinkers, published in 1890. This is a comprehensive book, uh, about 700 pages. Uh, it looks like the perspectives of many different philosophers, uh, polit politicians, national rulers throughout history. The part, uh, the, his book is divided into three parts, Hellenism, Christianity, and the modern world. He began, he began looking at Plato's uh, thoughts, um, and then he also looked at uh, Martin Luther's ideas. He looked at he looked at um, just many famous thinkers, philosophers, and just uh, just famous people throughout history. And he combined them, and and he discussed how their thoughts um, applied to use to uh, applied to the general public using philosophical ideas in their daily lives. Um, in a sense, his, 
th this work is more of a history textbook rather than him presenting his own ideas. Of course, he still added his own ideas in there. Um, we, we can feel we can say that this book is him trying to prove that not just himself but many people in in history have considered or agreed with philosophy should be something that not only the scholars or professors can study but also the general public in which they can apply them to to improve um, to improve their own lives so a bit about Oiken's writing style um, his writing style or should we say writing approach because he's not really a fiction writer he's a uh, research he, he was a researcher so uh, we usually use the word approach when talking about researchers writing uh, we use uh, we use uh, perspective or method, uh, not really method, but perspective when we talk about um, fiction writers, uh, fiction writers writing, writing process. So uh, in, his, in his early life, Oiken used a historical approach. So he, he mainly examined people in history or societies in history uh, when, when forming his work, just like what he, what, what he had done with the problem of human life as viewed by the great thinkers. So he borrowed a lot of um, information from history. Uh, but after, in his, er, in his later years, um, he used a more constructivistic approach in his work. Constructivistic means he is trying, uh, he's trying to present a problem without presenting a solution, uh, without, pre without presenting a way uh, or a, a tool to solving that problem. Um, a, a good analogy is, I tell you to measure the length of a boat, but I don't tell you how to use a ruler. So you need to, or his or Oiken's readers need to find that method uh, doing experimentation or doing uh, daily practice, which um, in a sense, this is how Oiken uh, spreads the idea of philosophy can be applied by gen by the general people uh, in in their daily lives because they because they, they he um, encouraged people to go out and experiment and try out different philosophical ideas theories uh, indiv independently uh, just like uh, just like the idea of philosophy of life uh, or you can believe that philosophy must be able to use in real life. Uh, so he's quite a realistic philosopher. Uh, the next point is he believed that a person is a meaning place of nature and spirit. So it is important to note that Oiken believes people have souls. Uh, people have souls. So and uh, he believes that a person uh, has, has two different has two dif has two different face faces. One is nature. One is spirit. Uh, he, he throughout all of his almost almost all of his work he promotes that people should fight the non-spirit part of um, of their own lives and, and promote and pursue the spirit part this means that he, he, he proposed that in order to to pursue the spiritual the spiritual phase of of person's daily life a person needs to be constantly active in doing something it does uh, he, or he can doesn't provide uh, specifically what to do but he, he, he says that we uh, we all need to be constantly doing something we cannot be stationary or sitting down sitting down all the time or sleeping all the time we need it to constantly be doing things this is uh, this uh, is where he introduces his own term ethical activism uh, a activism here means we need to be active uh, so a little bit more about his about his life, he retired from teaching in 1920, at six years before his death, to focus uh, mainly on his own on his own research on humanity. Uh, it's because he believed that teaching uh, might affect or disturb his research uh, career, uh, so he decided to step down. I mean, he has been teaching for all for for like uh, almost 40 years, so it's it's a, a good time for him to retire. Um, so in his later years, he also experienced World War I. Uh, as a German, he really he supported his own country and his research at the, at the time of war focused on how his, how his 
theories and his philosophic ideas could apply to national and social problems um, in Europe and especially in Germany, uh, because Eucken was German. Uh, some other famous works by, uh, written by him include the, the Truth of Religion, published in 1901, and Main Current of Modern Thoughts, published in 1908, and Can We Still Be Christians, published in 1914, and Individual and Society, published in 1923. Uh, these, his, all of his work is uh, scholarly, uh, research-based, um, as you can see here, he focuses a lot on how religion affects human lives and um, how modern thoughts, uh, those, uh, uh, those inspired by the Renaissance, affects human lives. And he also go back to questioning religion in his book, Can We Still Be Christians? And he goes on to talk about how, uh, how socialism actually uh, affects a, per a person's activism. So he, he said that in a book, he said that socialism limits uh, the, the, the activism that, that is present in, in your human lives. And he believed that people should, should not focus or pursue socialism uh, in, order to, in order to pursue their own activistic lives. Um, but like what I said in the beginning of my presentation, Oiken's life is comparatively less known compared uh, uh, less known compared to other famous writers. Um, he's you, even if after receiving his Nobel Prize, he was still not very famous. Although I mean, in, in his own academic niche, he was famous. But in front of the general public. I believe a lot of people have heard about Rudyard Kipling, but uh, not a lot of people uh, on the street will 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 know Oiken. So I still encourage you guys to read some of his books. Um, he, he's a great philosopher, and I hope that um, after reading his books, you'll be able to learn something from his philosophy. Because uh, although his ideas might be a bit outdated, uh, I mean compared to uh, to our 21st century, he believed that human, humans have souls, which um, is still debatable. It, it's just that it, it is not as popular as before. Uh, but so his the fundamentals of his studies studies are still worth our time. Uh, I, I know that fiction, the, the telling of fiction, might not change uh, in entertain in entertainment or its ability to attract people's attention over hundreds of years, but science, philosophy, history, or, gen or basically any academic fields, they can change really quick and they can change really drastically. Like, uh, after 20 years, what was said to be a universal truth might end up be, been, uh, be thrown into trash can. So, despite all that, Oiken is still someone who we should pay some attention to. Um, like I said, we don't, we don't know much uh, about about his life, um, of of course, if you want to dig dig deep, uh, you will you will find some information about him, if, you, if you're willing to do so. Wikipedia had a lot of uh, very little things, but if you go on to uh, scholarly articles written by other modern professors, you will you will find a lot of interesting um, interesting information about him. So I hope you enjoyed my presentation and. Hopefully you will enjoy other presentations about laureates of the Nobel Prize in Literature presented to you by Explore in the future. Thank you for listening.